Brighten your day by watching the Time with Teresa television show. Whether in the studio or on location, Teresa Westbrook and guests will warm your heart and encourage your soul. And now, your host, Teresa Westbrook. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm your host, Teresa Westbrook, coming to you from Texas Motor Speedway. Now, most of you are familiar with Texas Motor Speedway, where cars aggressively race to win the grand prize. But tonight, we are here to celebrate and support a great organization called Measured by Character. A little bit later on, we're going to be speaking to the founder of Measured by Character, Wade White, and his special guest speaker, Graham Allen. And tonight, we're just delighted to be here where this great organization will be racing to win Youth to Christ. Well, joining me now is the man of the hour and the founder of Measured by Character, Wade White. Well, uh, thank Welcome, you. Wade. Appreciate that. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> We're going to have a, us a great time. Yes. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, um, now, Wade, you've been a guest on the program before, so our viewers can backtrack and find that program and get your full testimony Absolutely. at that. But we're because the event's about to start, we'll probably have to go a little bit quicker tonight. But... Tell us more about your organization and about this event we're at tonight. Yeah, can I say something about that? That yes, sir. Um, the, when I was on your show the first time, oh, sure. Um, if you can uh, go back in the archives, go find that because it was that day was very powerful. It was. Yeah, yes. it's. It. I actually we went into the full testimony mm -hmm. of how this whole uh, pain to purpose message actually got started and and uh, understanding um, what we're doing. And uh, the greatest mission field in America is the public school. And um, what doors have been open up to this present moment? Yes. Well, we'll go ahead and tell them the inspiration behind Measured by Character. Well, you know, we've heard that there's a pain um, from pain to purpose, from ashes into beauty. And truly, that's what Measured by Character is. On April 6, 2012, my son, Ryan Blakely White, fell asleep behind the wheel. He was six weeks before graduation, and he went head on with a tractor and was killed instantly. I was on the scene over the next nine months, truly while praying to die and, and walking through grief, and um, I began to bleed on paper. I have many mentors, I have many pastors that are in my life, and that's what they said. And, and so I would travel out to where the accident, accident occurred, and because I was there that day, it's really my, kind of my place of peace. And, and while sitting there in my truck, I would just, if I had a thought, I would just jot something down. What I didn't know was, was that those things that I was jotting down out of my, the depths of my soul um, turned into being a message that, uh, in fact, I knew the day when I was writing Purpose of Life, the most powerful day on earth, was the day that you were born. And as you opened your eyes and saw the world, you did not know. You began to change the world around you. I knew that, and I saw it in a vision, that this message was for public school. But it had been 30 years since I had been in the school. I didn't know how that was going to be. I didn't know. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I didn't know how yeah. that door was going to open. Mm -hmm. And um, so I just took a, 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 a walk of faith, um, even in my brokenness. And um, I did the first message one year to the date at a church in Aubrey, Texas. 
and then from there we did a we did a crusade at TWU, and it, again right at the end of that message, it's just a still small voice said public school. The next following week, I got asked to go and speak at Tioga, and and that's when the, really the confirmation came that I knew that. I'd heard correctly. Oh, absolutely. And so I went and did it, and my goodness, you talk about the power. Uh, you know, this message, if you've never heard it before, this message is two hours long, and they have an attention span of about three, three and a half minutes. <laughs> I didn't know how that was going to be pulled <laughs> right? off, but I'm telling you, they were engaged from beginning to end. Yeah. Yes. yeah, you have to know the Lord's behind this because it is so amazing the growth that you have had over just some short years. Here we are at your second annual fundraiser yes. at the Texas Motor Speedway. At the Texas Motor Speedway, <laughs> yes, yes. I'm getting goosebumps, so don't go back this booth, but I get goosebumps, yes, yes. So that is just awesome, and doors are opening. Uh, you, you've got really almost a full schedule for public schools this year, correct? Yeah, yes, ma'am. The, um, the tour schedule for Measure by Character for 2018 is already full. Um, in fact, uh, 2019, we're already, we're already working on that. So that's already half full. Um, you know, when we do the big five and six A schools, it takes a lot to, to make sure that we're doing it on those particular dates. We've already got confirmations from those we're just waiting on our, on our actual date. But uh, yes, ma'am, we'll be doing anywhere between 30 to 40 schools this year. And wow. Can you believe, I don't think I've told you, can you believe that we have now done 77 public schools? Awesome, awesome. 110,000 have heard this message of hope and of life and identity. Awesome. I want to say thank you to those schools who opened up their doors for Measured by Character. Yes, And I know it was a blessing. So uh, share some of the impact that, that those events have had on the school children. Yes. Um, well, you know, <laughs> you know, I said this message is two hours long. And, uh, and I've never said by a microphone, if you're dealing with something, come talk to me. But at the end of this message, um, they just line up on their own. And even though um, the message is two hours, you know, we're all dealing with something. I don't know what season of life that you're in right now, if it's grief, if it's pain, if it's, if it's a loss of any kind, um, a bad doctor report. You know, um, this is this life. And we're, so we're all dealing with something and going through something. And what I found was, was that by me being transparent and open with my heart, because out of the abundance of your heart does your mouth speak, that they were willing to bring that forth. So the reason why I say that is, is that even though the message is two hours, they line up on their, at their, uh, on their own at the end, and then we're in, the, we're in there on the gym floor for four, four and a half hours. Wow. One-on-one -on -one counseling. Nothing any more powerful than that, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very profound what you're doing. We talked to Jill, or uh, we'll be sharing a little bit later Jill's interview and and so she shares what happens there too it's very profound very uh, very powerful well now how can others join in your efforts well well truly you know for measured by character measured by character has been grassroots community supported um, in fact the reasons why I told you before you know it was somebody that actually heard that message that was a teacher and then came over and and called and said hey will you Will you bring this to our school? And so that we've had parents, we've had teachers, we've had counselors, we've had friends that have reached out to those schools. And that is how this heart message has come to life. And there's nothing more powerful than that. We've, we've all heard that word of mouth is the most powerful thing. It truly is. Hey, you know what? We all have a microphone. The question uh -huh. is, is what are we speaking? Yes, yes, yes right. So uh, if any of the educators or parents want to uh, talk to you about coming to the school, go Absolutely. to your website and the contact information. Yes, ma'am. We have an 800 number. It's 844-622-0406. That 0406 is actually the, uh, the date of my son's passing, oh. April 6th, oh. yes, 2012. So uh, that is 844-622-0406, or you can go to measuredbycharacter.com. You can um, actually book the event through that. Um, you can... Email wade at measuredbycharacter.com, jill at measuredbycharacter.com, and um, we would love to, uh, to get you in as fast as we possibly can. Here in the next couple of weeks, we're probably going to have a very tight, full schedule. Yes. Well, now, Wade, uh, just one final question for you. When it's all said and done, 
Mm -hmm. How would you like people to remember you? <laughs> I can finalize it with this. Ryan's quote, I'm on top of the world when there's nobody in the world left to love. You know, it gets down to that word. And when you bring that forth, that automatically has an impact of legacy that goes all throughout eternity. Mm -hmm. That is how I would want to be remembered. That's how I would want measured by character to be remembered. Yes, absolutely. Well, Wade, I just want to say thank you for taking this deep <laughs> tragedy and turning it into such a positive influence for other youth. We wish you continued success and more growth this year than ever before. And we're excited to be here at this event, and I can't wait to hear what you have to share tonight. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you, ma'am. Bye-bye. Joining me now is an 11-year Army veteran who today continues to fight for our freedom of speech. Would you? And he's also a viral sensation. Would you please help me welcome Graham Allen to the program. Welcome, Graham. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Well, it's a delight to meet you and have you here. But first off, I want to say thank you so much for serving in the military well, and protecting you. our freedoms. We don't want to ever take our mil military for granted, and we are appreciative of all the men and women who serve. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't do much anymore. Uh, there's, there's much better men and women than me that still put the uniform on every single day, but, but thank you. Yes, well, thank you for your service. Well, uh, now, I mentioned you've become a viral sensation, <laughs> and you're known as the rant guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, and so somehow, somehow we made... Uh, venting in your vehicle or on camera a thing and we turned it into this uh this tv show and, and everything and so it, it all kind of started as a joke you know um it started with me getting run off the road by an elderly person. Oh. <laughs> and so the very first video was, uh, you know, uh, what we all want to say about bad drivers. And so it was kind of just this, this gimmick and things. And it slowly started to turn into this talking about real issues that are going on the breakdown of the nuclear family, values and morals within our society. And, and, and it is an opinion-based series. <laughs> I mean, it is me and what I think, but, but I think we tapped into a voice of a majority of America that feels that we've lost a little something that we used to have and, and, yes. and that we want it back and we want those morals and, and, and Jesus back in our schools and, you know, and, and eating together at the table at night with our families, you know, those are the things that we, we actually want back. And I think it resonates with a lot of folks. Yes, absolutely. All, uh, so many of those values, they're really impactful. They really create positive change exactly. to have that. So there is a message behind the rant. <laughs> oh, no, that, that there is, there, there's one million percent a message behind it. Uh, and I'm very excited for the opportunity to speak here today because it gives me a chance to strip away the character that is the rant guy. Oh, okay. And, and you know, really, really talk about who Graham Allen is and, and the formation of this person that so many people see now. You know, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a whole history and a struggle that goes along with that. And, and I think that uh, I'm very excited to be able to start to uh, present that to everybody. Well, I'm glad to hear that myself, and I'm looking forward to hearing <laughs> what you present later tonight. So tonight, as you said, you are the guest speaker, and mm -hmm. you're probably going to be speaking about the common issues that youth yes. face, such as suicide and bullying. Could you look at the camera and give our viewers just a snippet of what you might be sharing tonight? Well, uh, tonight I'm going to address it from a perspective of I'm going to open up and let people into my life and my childhood and what I grew up with and the struggles that I had and I once was a very insecure, uh, bullied individual myself. And, you know, and now, uh, 31 years later, we're here in this situation. And, and just how God is, is, is a, you know, is a loving God. And even if you have your problems and you struggle and you stray away, he still never strays away from you. And, and he can truly turn your pain into something that could affect uh, billions of people now at this point. And, and so, you know, so, so that's kind of the, the, the way we're going to go about it tonight. 
Yes, well, that's awesome. It, I just want you to flex. It, you say you were bullied. <laughs> well, I don't well, think that would happen again, would it? Yeah, well, you know, it, it, like I said, I, the, 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 you know, I, I truly believe that life is all about, you know, we, we enter different versions of ourselves so many times as we grow older and everything. And one of the main things that I tell every young person is, you know, where you are right now, is not where you're going to be for forever. Yes. And, you know, uh, you can go from the metaphorical weakest to the strongest person, you know, like that in the blink of an eye. And so I truly believe that the hardships and struggles that we face is preparing us for what we are supposed to do later on. And so, you know, uh, again, that's kind of the route we're going to go with it tonight, and, and I'm excited about it. Awesome. Well, uh, Graham, could you let our viewers know, um, maybe there's someone watching, a student that's watching, that may be falling prey to a bully, and could you tell them some practical steps to protect themselves from that happening? Yeah, well, I think, I think the biggest thing is you can't affect other people, and that's a big thing to realize. And, and a lot of reasons that people have a problem with you, it's less about there's something wrong with you and more it's something wrong with them. And it's to realize and be strong-willed and set in your own foundations that you are who you are supposed to be. And just because someone has a problem with that, it probably actually means that you're doing things the right way. Because true leaders in this world are the ones that are attacked and sought after the most because you are not falling in the crowd. You are not just doing what the status quo says you're supposed to do, which America in 2018, a lot of the status quo is not the moral high ground of which we should be operating on. So stand true to who you are, what you believe you're supposed to be, and stay true to your faith, stay, to, stay true to who you are. And I truly believe the rest will take care of itself. Oh, that is so good, Graham. So good. Well, now, could you maybe uh, share with our parents uh, some maybe signs or something that would signal that perhaps their child is um, contemplating suicide? So, uh, so you're trying to get me on another tangent now with parents. <laughs> uh, so, so, so I am a parent myself. I have three children. And I think that we have, I put a lot of emphasis and a lot of responsibility on parents to include myself and I think that a lot of parents don't hold themselves accountable enough for our charge by God to be parents to our children not our children's friends not our this right. and not our that and to be present and to be active in what they're doing what they're listening to what they're seeing what they're viewing who their friends are uh, being aware of the signs you know some of the signs of bullying include depression <laughs> you know yes. feelings of a of, of loss of self-worth and things like that these are these are tall tale signs to eventual thoughts of maybe suicide. And it is our responsibility now with suicide being the 10th leading cause of death in America wow. to be those authority figures and to be that strong power for our younger generations and our children to lift them up. And it all starts at home. You know, uh, we need to stop worrying about likes and shares on Instagram as parents. It, you know, we're more concerned about people liking our family photo than we are why are our children struggling in school? Why are their grades dropping? Why are they having trouble making friends? Why are they sad? It's time for us to be present back in our homes. Yes, yes, I totally agree with that. And, but, but I do understand the difficulties. We have so many single parents it's these days. Mm -hmm. Then we have both parents working. Yep. And so it, uh, what, there was a term a long time ago, latch key kids, because both parents were away from home. But it's so important, maybe they might have to do without a little bit more of the materialistic things yep. while their children are developing and growing. It is, it is our responsibility. And again, I, I speak this to myself. I work a lot. I do. And there are times that me and my family have to decide between losing money and staying home because it's just it's the way it is. And like you said, losing materialistic things, it is more important for us to turn and help guide our children to be constructive members and self a preacher said it like this, you don't, you want them, you don't want them to be dependent. You want them, you don't want them to be independent. You want them to be decision-based dependent upon God, mm -hmm. 
and upon what they're supposed to do as adults. And, and that's where I believe that we are failing on a grand scale as parents. It is our responsibility to teach them uh, to be grown adults, contributing members of society, and to be dependent on the one person that they are supposed to be dependent on, and that's God. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, now, uh, Graham, could you share a little bit? We're going to do the flip side now. Okay, all right. What could alert teachers and parents uh, to a student or a child that may be a potential threat to others? So uh, I actually was reading up on a uh, study about this just, just earlier, and, and it was a very shocking statistic that I read, and it said 84% of adults have witnessed a form of bullying or have seen signs of someone that could be a potential harm to themselves and to others. But all of those adults don't really know what to do in those situations. And it's more of a, not a fear of being wrong. Well, what if I misinterpreted that? It's more a fear of everyone else finding out that they were wrong and that they misjudged a mm. child. And I think that we have, again, a responsibility as the, you know, as the, you know, we have elders of our current generation and we have the adults of our current generation. And it is the adult's job to shape the foundation for the next generation and the safety of the, of the younger generations. And so be bold in what you believe, trust your gut and what you feel, because it is far less important for someone's feelings to be hurt than for you to worry about that when you could actually positively affect a change in not only the safety of others around, but in that individual that you feel that there may be issues there. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I believe. Yes, sir. I believe that. We are our brother's keeper. Exactly. We are there to help one another along life's journey. Yes, so I so appreciate all the words of wisdom that you've <laughs> shared tonight and sharing from your heart. I greatly appreciate Thank that. You. And uh, I just have one final question for you. Okay. I know um, there's a lot of people waiting to see you, <laughs> but uh, Graham, please fill in the blank. Graham Allen is. Oh, Graham Allen is a very simple man that is just uh, just trying to still figure out why I've been given this platform that I have and if I can affect some kind of positive change with it then that's then that's what I want to do so awesome well we're looking forward to hearing you tonight Thank you very and much. it's a delight it. to have you on the program Thank you God bless much. you and we wish you all the best all right. God bless you as well. joining me on set now is Jill Ward welcome Jill thank you it's so good to meet you, Jill, and you are a board member of Measured by Character, correct? Correct. And uh, could you share a little bit about your professional background with our viewers? Uh, yes, I was a, uh, an events director for uh, Air One and K-Love in the DFW area, Air One and K-Love Radio. Um, so that's, what, that's my professional background, marketing. Well, then you're a natural to help out with Measured by Character, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> and a great blessing, I'm sure. So, uh, well, what inspired you to get involved with Measured by Character? I actually met Wade before he even started taking Measured by Character to the schools. I uh, met him when he did the first crusade. And um, I just knew that this was something that I wanted to be a part of. Um, I had seen his son's cross on the side of the road, and I told my mom, we were driving, and I said, oh, mom, look, his light still shines even after he's gone. And that was before I knew, I mean, I had met Wade that the week before, but I didn't know anything about his son or anything like that. And then Wade called me the next day because we exchanged cards at a meeting, and uh, he wanted to tell me about the nonprofit, and I work with nonprofits at that point, so I was like, <laughs> we can work together. And so he called me the day after I said that to my mom and started telling me about his son, Ryan, and uh, about how he had uh, gotten in a, a wreck on 428. Yeah. And I, I, was, I remember I was on the phone with him and I was like, is your son's name Ryan? And he was like, yes. <laughs> and I was like, I saw his cross and I told my mom that his light is shining. I started crying and I was, like, I was like, this is a God thing. We were supposed to work together. Oh, <laughs> awesome. That's wonderful when God puts his children together for yes, a greater purpose. So have you actually attended some of the school events? I have been at over 50. Oh, wow. Yes. So just look at our camera. Tell our viewers what you experienced at some of those events. 
Measured by character at the schools is like nothing I've ever experienced before. The kids walk in and you know they've, they've got this tough guy persona going on because we've got middle school students and high school students and um, there's kids that are, you know, we're too good to be here and we're not gonna pay attention. And once Wade gets into um, telling the story about his son, they see the, the news footage, you can see them connect with, uh, with it because Ryan was their age. And so they think, oh my gosh, this could happen to me. Like, I'm not promised tomorrow. And so by the time that Wade is finished telling the story about what happened with Ryan, the kids are completely engaged. The room is quiet. They are all locked in and listening. And um, Wade also gives them the opportunity to um, ask for forgiveness for anybody that they've wronged uh, at the school. If there's somebody that you've said something to or you may have not been very nice to, uh, now is your chance to go ask them for forgiveness. Well, that's powerful. And have you noticed interaction in that happening, actually? It is the coolest thing ever because that's called the turnaround. Mm -hmm. And kids get up and they go introduce themselves to kids that they've never met before, go sit by somebody new, and then you'll see kids hugging and crying and saying that they're sorry. And you can feel the unity and the come together that happens uh, right then and there. Oh, that is so awesome. Yes. That is beautiful. I love that. Well, Jill, we're here at the fundraiser tonight, the annual fundraiser. What do you hope happens at tonight's event? I hope that everybody gets a really good understanding at what, for what Measured by Character is, uh, what we need, and um, that we have uh, people that are willing to hold hands with us to uh, pour hope into the next generation. All right. So now, speaking as a parent, not a board member of Measured okay. by Character, but as a parent, how important do you think programs like Measured by Character are to get into our schools and share with the students? It's crucial. I have a 10-year-old, almost 11, and he comes home and tells me, I mean, he's going into the fifth grade. The bullying that happens in his school is... In, it's insane. And even my kindergartner, well, he's now first grade, comes and tells me about how kids pick on other kids. And oh, I mean, wow. it's, it happens as early as kindergarten. Wow. And it is absolutely crucial that we have this message because kids also realize that every single person matters, that, um, that we're all here for a specific reason. And uh, just to, to love your neighbor as yourself. That's beautiful, Jill. Well, thank you so much yes, for all that you're doing for Measured by Character, and it was a delight having you on the program. Thank you. God bless you. You too. Thank you. Wow, what a blessing to be at the annual fundraiser of Measured by Character, to meet so many wonderful people, to hear such inspirational speakers. The entire night was such a blessing. I encourage you to check out Measured by Character and consider bringing this event to your youth at church, at school, or your organization. I know that Wade White will present a compelling message and it will be a blessing to your entire school staff. God bless you and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching the Time with Teresa television show. For guest and sponsorship opportunities, contact Teresa today.